When I was filming the first and second hardest challenges possible, and especially during my attempt to break one of the SWAT 4 world records, which, bragging, I did, I was constantly cycling through weapons with each restart to try and find which one was the best. Well, I wish I would have thought of this before I did those videos, but it wasn't until I filmed the SWAT 4 AI Explained, which you should check out if you haven't, that I realized all the data I needed was tucked away in the game's files. Who would have thought, right? Extrapolating all the data from the file themselves, I created a spreadsheet that shows all the relevant data you could possibly need, along with marking the best in-class values and the best overall. This spreadsheet holds the definitive answer to the best weapons in the game. And in this video, I'm going to take you through it all. Well, okay, we, we won't be going through every single weapon. Only the ones that have the best for whatever the category it's in, in its class, minus identical stats, and then the best overall. Starting off with Magazine, for the shotguns, the Nova takes the win. Being able to hold 8 shells, whereas the Super 90 can only hold 5. For the pistols, it's without a doubt the 9mm handgun, as it can hold 17, whereas the M1911 can only hold 8. The true victor, the one that takes all, is without a doubt the 5.7 by 28 mm submachine gun, also known as the P90. It can hold 50 rounds per magazine. It is also the most annoying gun I've ever heard in my entire life. For the next category, we have Large Aim Error Recovery Rate. Now, if you're not 100% sure what that means, which, um, it's kind of oddly worded, so... You see the reticule there? Whenever I move or do any sort of action, it'll move out really far, then start moving back in. Notice how it starts to move in pretty quickly, but once it gets close to the middle, it'll start to move slower. That outer movement, before it gets slow when it comes together, is the large aim error recovery rate. When it gets slower as it gets tighter, that is the small aim error recovery rate. But for this category, we are specifically focusing on the large. And when it comes to the assault rifles, it is the GB36S that actually takes that victory by only a single point, coming in at 9. As the runner-up for the best, we have a significantly better MP5, coming in at 15. Look at the difference. Man, seeing those back to back, that is just crazy fast. However, the true victor, the one that takes it all, is the 9mm handgun, coming in at 17. Up next, we have the small aim error recovery rate. And it is actually the Colt M4A1 carbine that takes it this time for the rifles. Again, it is the speed where it starts to go slower as it gets tighter. That is the small aim error recovery rate. Only 2.5. And next up on the list is the 9mm handgun, coming in at only 1.5. But the true victor, the one that takes it all, is both the MP5 and the UMP, coming in at 2.75, making it the fastest to most accurate weapon. Not the most accurate, the fastest to get to its most accurate. Up next, we have the Standing Aim Error. Now, the Standing Aim Error is, in SWAT 4, perfect accuracy is zero. However, no matter what you're doing, you always have a penalty applied to your accuracy. Just like in this case, it is the Standing Aim Error. It is an actual error applied to you just by standing idle. And lucky us, we don't even have to switch weapons this time around, because for the SMGs, once again, the 9mm SMG, also known as the MP5, 
is the best in the SMG class. Walking and standing. Walking, standing, well rather running, standing, standing. And next up on the list once again is the 9mm pistol coming in at 0.56. Remember, the closer to zero, the better it'll be in this category. Running, standing, running, standing. However, most shockingly for me anyways, is that it is the GB36S, or the G36C for its uh, real counterpart, actually has the best standing accuracy coming in at only 0.2. In case you're curious, the M4A1 comes in at 0.25. Next category, we have the walking aim error, and you're probably able to put that one together on your own. It is what your aim will rest at while you're walking. Again, walking, not running. And the MP5 takes it for the SMGs coming in at 1.05. Remember, its standing aim accuracy was 0.45. That's really not too bad. I mean, that's, that's manageable, you know. However, the true winner for this category is the 9mm handgun once again, coming in at .85. It is the most accurate weapon that you can fire while walking. Uh, remember I said the most accurate while walking, not, not the most dead-eyed. The next category, which I'm not even sure why I'm including because you'd be crazy to even try it, is the running aim error. And we don't even have to put away our SMG this time around because it is once again the MP5 that has the best running aim accuracy out of all of the SMGs. Oh my god. You would be an idiot if you tried to play like this. But at least in this category, we get to bring out the shotguns again as we have the Nova Pump, which comes in with a running aim error of 10.5, which is only 0.5 better than the Super 90. Oh my gosh. You would be crazy to try and play like this. But once again, the overall victor is the 9mm handgun having the best possible accuracy you can have while running, coming in at 7.75. I just shot that cone. I shot the cone. I was aiming at the window, I shot the cone. Next category is the most accurate category, the crouching aim error. And for this one, we actually get to bring the shotguns back out again for the second time in a row. With the pump action shotgun, the Nova pump action shotgun, having a crouching aim error of two. Now pay attention to the reticule. I'll wait for it to close in. Now watch when I crouch. See how it closes in? Standing. Closed. Not too much of a difference, but it is there. Up next in the crouching aim error category, we have the 9mm SMG. Now, the 9mm SMG also shares this same value with its silenced counterpart, and that value is a .25. Look at how tiny that is. Standing, crouching. Less accurate, far more accurate. 
Yes, I know we're standing like three feet away from that target. Once again, kind of shocking to me, it is the GB36S, or G36C, that has the best crouching aim error. It wins against everything else in this category, coming in at .1. That is the most accurate you can get in this game, is with the GB36S while crouching. Too bad everything else about this gun sucks, huh? In the next category, we have something called Fired Aim Error. Now, this is different than recoil, okay? What this is, is when you fire your gun, it will apply this penalty to it immediately, to your accuracy. This is not what makes your gun rise, this is just what makes your bullets go somewhere else. And to start us off in this category is the Colt M4A1 Carbine coming in with a fired aim error of 1.25. Now, also, this error is applied on whatever else you're doing. So just standing here, the M4A1 has a standing aim error of 0.25. So, when I fire this weapon while standing from 0.25, it will increase by 1.25. So, it should jump up to 1.5. Our runner-up is the 9mm SMG, also known as the MP5, having a fired aim error of only .75. Now, remember, this weapon has a .45 standing error, so it will apply the .75 on top of the .45. And actually kind of surprising is the fact that the true winner of this category is the 9mm handgun once again. Now this is shocking to me, surprising at least, because it's a 9mm. The MP5 is also a 9mm except it's in a longer form. You have both hands on it, it should be far more controllable than this thing. But. The 9mm handgun comes in with a best possible fired aim error accuracy of 0.4. And again for this one, the standing aim error is 0.55, so you'll apply the 0.4 to 0.55. So it's not even one, actually. The next two categories we have are the injured aim error and the max injured aim error. Now just in case you don't know exactly what that means, when you get shot in say the arm, it will apply an accuracy penalty to you. In the MP5's case, it applies an accuracy penalty of 1 to you. However, as you start to take damage across more of your body, as you can see from my little guy on the bottom left there, it can get all the way up to, in the MP5's case, 4. And that is a penalty that is applied to everything, just like the standing aim error, just like the walking aim error. This applies to everything, and look at what it does to your accuracy. I am the same, you know, three feet away here, and just watch this. Never once got it in the bullseye from three feet away. The MP5 and the silenced MP5, along with the 45 or UMP, 
all have the exact same injured aim error. They all have one. However, it is the UMP and the P90 that have the best max injured aim error in the SMG category of only three, whereas the two MP4s are, I'm sorry, MP5s are four. When it comes to the rifles, the M4A1 takes both the win for the injured aim and max injured aim error, with its injured aim error being 1.15 and its max injured aim error being five. And again, look at how terrible that accuracy is. This, this is a 5 being applied to the standing aim error, which for the four, M4A1 is 0.25. So we are at 5.25 right now. Oh my god, I hit, I hit the guy behind him. Yeesh. By the way... Those, uh, those two I made in the bullseye there, I don't know if you were paying attention or not, I had accidentally looked, like, over <laughs> when those hit, so, so just disregard those entirely. Ugh. However, once again, it is the 9mm pistol that has both the best in, in all classes for the entire category, injured aim error and max injured aim error with an injured aim error of 0.5 and a max injured aim error of 1. Now, the M1911 also has these same two injury aim errors, but the 9mm has pretty much, well not pretty much, has beaten it on everything else so far, so uh, no real reason to even bother talking about that one. But look at how good that is compared to everything else. I wonder how many we can get in the bullseye. Three. Four, well, three and a half. Four, five, six, seven. Was that nine there? This thing, the, the nine millimeter pistol is just the best sidearm you can have, okay? The M1911 is really cool, and it obviously has more stopping power, but it just gets outclassed in every other way by the 9mm handgun. In the next and final category, we are finally at recoil. Now, as you remember, as you probably remember from earlier, the large aim error recovery rate and the small aim error recovery rate, I was saying that those are not recoil, those are just accuracy, okay? This recoil category is the amount that your gun will actually rise. And to start us off, we have the M4A1 carbine. Now there's something kind of interesting about this too. The way the recoil works is it'll, it'll have a base number that the gun will raise, rise regardless. However, when it's fired fully automatic, or burst fire in some guns' cases, it will have an incremental increase to that base number. So, for instance, the M4A1 carbine here, it has a recoil value of 235. However, when it is fired in fully auto, it has an increment of plus 70. Now, the GB36S has a recoil of 240. That's five points higher. However, it has an auto incremental of plus 65, which is five less. So, when fired in full auto, these weapons have the exact same recoil. It is only when fired in a single shot format and especially, I say format because the GB36S is only automatic, automatic or burst fire, but you can control your fire with it to get a single round off. But I just thought that was kind of interesting. Anyways, let's see what 235 recoil looks like. Not too much, not too terribly much. Let's go ahead and reload. And now let's see what 235 plus 70 incremental is. I'm not going to try and control my aim. I'm just going to hold the button down. <laughs> I hope no one lives above me. And of course, a runner-up or at least contestant for recoil is the 9mm handgun because it's been pretty much everything else so far. It only has a recoil of 200, and of course it cannot be fired in full auto mode. 
It is only single shot, so there are no incremental penalties that also apply. We'll reload and then we'll do some rapid fire to see how high it'll go then. Try and get it as centered as possible and... Sheesh. That was actually kind of surprising. However, the 9mm pistol is not the victor. The P90 is. Or as it's known in this game, the 57 by 28 millimeter submachine gun. I don't know why they call it that. That's stupid. Maybe they couldn't get the rights to call it P90 or something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyways, this wins with a base recoil of 180. Also, much less important, the increment, the auto incremental value is plus 25. So not only does it have the best recoil, base recoil, it also has one of the best auto incrementals, matched only by the MP5s, which also have a plus 25, but have 200 base recoil. So we'll try this in semi-automatic with controlled shots. This is the most annoying thing in the world to shoot. I know I've said this already, but my god, I could not use this weapon throughout an entire mission. Alright, and now we'll spin around, let those despawn, come back around, and now we will... I will just fire single shots without... Uh, uh, rapidly. Trying to... This, this is just painful, but I'm trying to pick my mouse up off the table so I don't accidentally nudge it at all. While I'm clicking. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Eesh. All right. We'll do a few in a burst fire to see what the auto incremental is like for the burst fire. And then we'll do full auto. Only have one magazine left, so. Interesting. All right, now let's see what the full auto is like. Again, I won't be pulling down on the mouse. It'll just, I'll just hold the button down. What's funny is because of how much extra ammunition it has, we actually would have gone up even higher than the M4A1 did. The M4A1, by the time we got to the very top, it had like, what, three, four shots left in it? This thing still had, you know, 10, 15, not 10 and 15, but more than two or three. Man. But all right, now that is not all of the categories I have in the spreadsheet that I made. I included a lot more information, a lot of stuff that you might not even need to know. Here it is, it is color coordinated, it includes less lethal, it includes grenades, has much more, has many more categories than what I read off in the, in the video. Got things like range, which really, really don't matter. Muzzle velocity, which really doesn't matter. Max aim penalty, which does not seem to do what it sounds like it does. So, but anyways, have all this information here for you. I've, I've never made a spreadsheet before, so I'm sorry if this is like horrible, god awful. I, this first time, first time trying to share it with you here. Also, speaking of sharing it with you, I will have this spreadsheet available for download in the description below. Uh, it's not going to be, it's not on like AdFly, it's not some affiliate link or anything like that. It's just on Google Drive. You click it, go there, and it downloads for you. And it's just the ODS file. So hopefully that helps you out. Or at least, you know, maybe you think it'll be something interesting to have or whatever. Whatever you need, it's right here. Again, green is the best in class, whereas the purple is the best overall. I imagine if you've made it this far in the video, you're either finding it helpful, interesting, or at least entertaining. And I would be very appreciative if you hit the like button and maybe even considered subscribing. It, of course, helps in every possible way as far as YouTube goes, and it would be great to get more than 100 views on a video for once. But enough of all that, let's get to which weapons are truly the best in SWAT 4. Bring up the data and let's go down the list. Shotguns. The Nova is the only shotgun that placed on this list at all. But 
it's also a pump action, meaning that even if it is the best mathematically, or at least statistically, its relatively slow rate of fire might void everything it's been awarded so far. Final verdict being, it depends. Rifles. On paper, there's actually a fair bit of competition between the M4A1 and the GB36S. However, if you've ever played SWAT 4, I'm sure you'll agree that the M4A1 not only consistently performs better than the GB, but it also just feels better. And even if it weren't for those close statistical performance, I think a weapon that feels better to use is overall better for the player than one that is technically better but doesn't feel good to fire. Final verdict is M4A1 all the way. SMGs. The numbers don't lie on this one. The MP5 and its silenced counterpart really do seem to be the best, not only in stats, but also how it feels in the game. You could make the argument that the UMP is easier to use because of its very slow, like oddly slow, ridiculously slow, fire rate. But that only really matters if you're going full auto. So the final verdict is MP5 without a doubt. And lastly, pistols. I think the data shows a pretty clear victor here. 17 rounds, excellent recovery rates, the best movement-based penalties, and the perfect weapon for when you've taken a round in the arm. The only argument that can be made against it is the cool factor of the M1911 along with their superior stopping power. But honestly, look at all those awards. Potentially having to fire a second round is a trade-off I'm willing to make. Final verdict, 9mm is the perfect sidearm. How about a mission loadout though? Sure, there's a best weapon in every class, but which one should you actually use? Which one is truly the best? You came all this way, listened to all the stats, all the data, and the final verdict for the definitive best weapon in SWAT 4 is... A three-way tie. The M4A1, though being the jack of all trades and preferred for most missions and at any range, the MP5 still has that extra edge in consistent performance regardless of what you're doing, but really only insofar as CQB is concerned. And the 9mm pistol is just the absolute best sidearm or backup you can get. Look, running the M4A1 with a 9mm as a backup the MP5 with a taser, or a beanbag shotgun with the 9mm, you really can't go wrong. It just depends on the mission's parameters. I really hope this helped you out. Maybe taught you something you didn't know, or at least entertained you. Don't forget to download that spreadsheet to see all the information I didn't include in this video. And of course, if it did something for you, hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. This is Mitchell Godsend. Have a good one.